Hello friends, welcome to PPK portal channel. In this uh, video, I will be explaining the very basics of how to do the PID control in Delta PLC, the Slim, the Slim DVP series. And I'm using the ISP software for that. So let us check how to do that. First of all, uh, let me make sure that I have connected the PLC and it's online. Uh, I am using here for the FC series PLC for the demonstration. Yeah, it's there. Now I will create a new project. Now in Delta PLC, in the ISP software, uh, the DVP series actually, there is two PID blocks available. One is a 16-bit version and uh, one is 32-bit version. Now in this example, then let me create a project here. Program PID. I will create a new program here. I will name it as uh, PID2. Okay. Yeah. So the there is two type of PID in the blocks available by default. One is 16-bit and another is 32-bit. The 16-bit version, there is one uh, customized option to control the temperature. In this example, I will be only talking on temperature control because there is a, some custom functions which is available, which makes it easy to configure. Now, I don't have any temperature module or something here, so I will be just simulating the things for you. You have to really work it out with your real hardware connected. Now, uh, first, uh, there is some initialization coming so initialization block i will fill it later now in the next run i uh, want this to be working already so i'm using m1000 here and i'm calling the pid instruction here now if you're calling just pid it will be the 16-bit uh, version there is another version which is PPID, which is the 32-bit version. I'm not using 32-bit, I'm using only 16-bit. So let me comment like 16-bit PID instruction. And in this case, it is, it is used, it's used as temperature control function. Now, let me talk about the variables. This block has called S1, S2, S3, 3 input section and one output. This is the manipulated variable which is coming out of the PID. And uh, you know what is PID? It's a closed loop control and um, there is proportional part for it, the integral part for it and the differential part for it. And uh, the inputs if I am talking, S1 is the set point uh, for the PID, S2 is the process variable or feedback, the actual feedback which is coming and S3 is actually the settings for the PID and it occupies consecutive 20 16-bit registers that is 16 words, consecutive 16 words and uh, D is the manipulated variable which is the output of the PID it will be always an analog value coming out now uh, before uh, I have to I also mention few things now um, here uh, when you are doing a program in real case, you have to make sure that you are giving a redundancy memory for this uh, PID settings because uh, once you save a setting, when you, you tune the PID, the settings should remain there for even if you are turning off and on. So you have to make sure that the register values which you are providing for the S3, it is redundancy range. So let us give some values here. Now I for the set point, I am using D100. For the process feedback, I'm using D101. And here, you see, if you go to this option here in the SC PLC icon, you go to the redundancy range and you click the D, you will see the blocks which are available with the redundancy range. So I will use, since nothing is used here, I will start with 2000. So I will put it as D2000. And the output, let it be D10. That will be D200. So this is the basic uh, variable declarations for the PID. So 
let me let me test uh, here uh, now yeah here I will declare and defrace PID set point D100 it's variable type word then there is PID process variable it's D101 it's word then there is the PID manipulated variable it's D200 again it's word type now this D2000 as I previously told I will show you in the manual it's occupying 20 registers now uh, all of them we don't need actually and we need uh, only few of these uh, parameters uh, so but I have to monitor these certain parameters so I will in the monitoring table device monitoring table I will create like monitor PID and here I am declaring D2000 and I am monitoring 20 of them consequently so these are the registers which are available now I no need to use all of them but I need some few of them if you check here now uh, that I will come to that one later on now if you have already worked with Delta PLC I am now only talking on perspective of Delta DVP series we have this temperature thermocouple module and PT100 module which are available for measuring the temperature and uh, they are giving uh, the value with the precision of 0.1 degree Celsius I'm talking about kind of Celsius range so suppose if the temperature is like uh, 32 degrees the value which we will get using the from instruction it will be like something like 320 if the temperature is uh, 20 degree to the value which we will getting will be 200 so I assume the same you have the module there and you are getting the value in that range okay now the manipulated variable now the uh, yeah the PID output as I told before it's coming analog value you can define the manipulated value range how far it should go like uh, how far the maximum range it should be but in most cases in control panels and all uh, there is situations yeah in which we have to use the analog output but most cases there will be solid state release which requires the pulses to control so in the for the both case i will be writing here the program for the both case so this output uh, uh, by default in this program i'm using the maximum range is 4000 because the analog output module has by default 4000 for the low resolution analog output module for delta PLC. so the suppose the PID output is full means you will get the decimal value 4000 so I am using one more block here called TPWM now TPWM is something which generates the pulses based on the width so here so the, this analog output which is coming proportional analog output which is coming I am making it in terms of time frame by pulses so that your control is achieved so its uh, input base input will be the manipulated variable and here I need one temporary variable something like the 20 I will put and this is your pulse output I for time being I will assign to some output say y0 you have to make sure it's an SSR output because there will be high frequency pulses coming when it's approaching the set point now now you are almost done we have to initialize two things here so for the first scan when the PLC is turning from stop to run so I'm using the single positive pulse M1002 and in that I am moving the value 4000 to D20 because uh, as I told the my maximum is uh, the maximum output which is coming from the PID is 4000 so if the maximum is coming if my uh, output should be uh, always on so the maximum value I'm going moving to this one and the scan cycle scrambling times for the PID so what Delta recommended and by default is uh, 400 milliseconds that I'm moving to D2000 now if you observe the PID parameter block it's starting with D2000 and the first parameter if you check the manual 
the first parameter is the sampling time so you can maximum have up to 2000 range and the limit is 10 millisecond so here I have put this value here now we have almost done now coming to the main thing uh, here then the delta you have the suppose now our address range is starting with uh, d2000 right so the d2000 is nothing but this uh, sampling time d2001 it will be proportional gain d2002 integral gain 3 this differential gain and 4 is the control mode now if you have a sub another part of PID control you can play with this parameter if you have a forward control inverse control but right now I'll be just concentrating on this one setting C4 exclusively for the adjusted temperature control and note that it's not available in the 32-bit version also. it's only available in this particular version and uh, here I cannot simulate you proper uh, but I will tell you what happened once you configure this instructions and you set this value first time you are running with your real hardware connected your heater connected and you are running and you are setting the value 4 here the PID block start auto tuning by itself you have not to nothing worry about the tuning parameter it will auto tune your temperature control the loop and after tuning it will automatically come to the setting 3 that means your tuning is finished so whenever you feel like uh, you need to tune the system you just have to change this value to 4 and wait it's as simple as that now let me download this program to my PLC uh, now I'm downloading now I'm going online now I will try to set some set point assuming that I need a temperature of 32 degree I will set 320 here see immediately the output is full as for full coming and the output is high now as I'm gradually increasing the temperature you can observe here now I'm seeing that the temperature is already reached say 12 degree now later on will gradually increase so let me increase it maybe i didn't tune it but let me see what's happening yeah see it's coming down the value is coming down and see the output is becoming pulse intermittent pulse and it didn't reach the temperature because i'm still holding it so again the PID automatically went for the full opening so i will increase the temperature again to 300 see the value is again decreasing but it's waiting now the output is off and uh, let me try to cross the value like I put, put 360 and the feedback is more than this uh, set point and it's reducing the value and see it's coming down my scan sampling time which I given is little large you can reduce if you want to get more responsive behavior or you can play with the PID values uh, to get more accurate control see now the output is almost zero now uh, coming back to the settings here you have this setting here see now it's already on 4 because uh, before starting this video I had done a trial and the value is still here I don't have the real hardware with me for the auto tuning to work but you can change this value and uh, you will get the results like all the parameters will be auto tuned for you and it will automatically return to 3 now again the program so this is your pulse output in the case you are using SSR you will be using this digital output and in the case you have some kind of a boiler or control in which you have an analog wall for the steam or heat heating control you need the analog output in that case you can use the manipulated variable you can scale it if you want to reduce the resolution or whatever and it's not necessary that uh, uh, it should be in this range because you can even give 0 to 8000 range or 0 to 4000 whatever range you need uh, the input uh, it will uh, calculate accordingly why I choose this direct range because the all the delta modules this dp 0 tcs or 04 pts 06 pts all these uh, temperature module 
So the reading coming is like this. If your temperature support is 36 degree, you will get this reading like 360. So this is as simple as this. And I hope you got a basic idea of how the temperature tuning is happening using the PID block. Uh, if you like the videos, do subscribe to our channel. Share the channel with your friends and leave the comments your valuable feedback. Thank you all.